Hello, Brother Monroe here. Welcome back to Ultimate Animal Dreadnoughts. And, well, not exactly the same campaign um, that you will have seen in the previous episode where uh, France came to help out, um, but uh, a time skip to 1910. Now, this has been caused by two things. One, I really don't want to play the 1890s again. It, it causes me pain. I don't like pre-dreadnoughts. Um, <laughs> but also, you know, I thought that was a reasonable amount of time for things to settle down, then build back up again. And um, I have designed a fleet kind of in mind that uh, things would have progressed from an 1890 campaign. So it's not all the latest and greatest ships. There is a mixture. And not only is there a mixture... These are as close as I can kind of get with the historically inspired ships. So uh, we'll start off with the smallest ship. This is our A-class destroyer, uh, based on very loosely based on the real uh, A-class destroyer. Um, this is a destroyer. Jeez. What hull is it? I can't even remember. I think it's a Destroyer 1. It's the very first one you get. Um, pretty nice. It has five three-inch guns. And these are 3 slash 50. Um, it's pretty nice. It's it's pretty fast. 35 knots. Much faster than a real A-class. Um, it it's got maximum bulkheads. Uh, it's got all the shiny bells and whistles, and it is a steel brick as well. It's a really nice little destroyer. Um, I think she should do fine, and just like the real A-Class, she's using 18-inch standard torpedoes. So not really much, too much to talk about with these. Uh, I have a lot of them. I have 35 of these bad boys, and... <laughs> Just to be extra, they are all named after A-class ships. <laughs> um, in fact, all the ships are named after historical ships uh, and roughly correspond to a historical class. Next, we have the Topaz class, uh, protected cruiser or light cruiser. These were the last. Um, these were the last light cruisers, the raw uh, protected cruisers the Royal Navy built. Uh, and I've kind of stuck to the same idea. So we have some 4-inch quick-fire guns. I think they're 4-inch 45s. Um, it doesn't tell me when I, like, hover. Um, it doesn't, I wish it told you here. Uh, but uh, these things are not very fast. 22.5 knots. They do have maximum bulkheads, which are quite nice. Um, and they're pretty well protected. 6-inch six um, belts. Um, should do okay for kind of some picket work. Might send them down to the Mediterranean or something like that. You know, shoot up a convoy or something like that. But these these things are well, well past it. Uh, as is the next ship I'm going to show off. Um, <laughs> the Minotaur class, or Minotaur if you're a colonial person. Um, again, based on the real uh, Minotaur class. Or Minotaur class, uh, depending on your pronunciation. 9.2 inch, I think these are 45 caliber guns. Um, I couldn't get 7 inch guns in. She had like 7.1 inch guns on the side here, so I've gone for 6.9 inch guns. <laughs> um, and she only has two funnels instead of three. The, the funnels don't match. But you know, pinch of salt. Um, reasonably well protected, um, but yeah, very much going to be outclassed by the battle cruisers that we have access to. Um, very much representing a much older kind of design philosophy. This thing, um, still, it's it's not terrible for an armored cruiser. I, I wish the British got access to the mini dreadnought type ones that the Germans, um. And the Austro-Hungarians get access to, but they don't. So that's that. Uh, and then we have uh, two classes of battle cruiser. We have the Invincible class. And we should have uh, a whole bunch of these. Uh, where's the class? Yeah, so we have 
We have more than actually existed because these are the Invincibles and the Indefatigables. They're just using the same, the same template. Um, rather than making two different ones. Uh, hello then, uh, Lernor. That's a cool name. Uh, this is a continuation of my British long campaign, but there's a time skip because of updates and things like that. And I've gone historically inspired for my ship. So here is my version of the Invincible class. They have the 12 inch guns. Uh, I've made them 45 caliber. I think they're actually 50 caliber guns. Um, but the 45s, I think, suit this type of ship a bit better. They have they have a nice, they have a better rate of fire. Uh, we've got some uh, four inch gun. Oh no, this one has four and a half inch guns on the side and three inch guns in the casements. Uh, eight of them, uh, just like the real Invincibles. Uh, same kind of speed, 25 knots. Uh, the only difference is uh, I've actually put some armor on my ship. So hopefully they will be slightly less explosive than uh, <laughs> the historical ones. Um, and yeah, this is the Indefatigables are the same same class. And then we have uh, just one. Oh no, do, I think we have two lines actually. Yeah, we do. We have Lion and Princess Royal. And this is our most advanced ship. Uh, this is the only one we actually have with the 13.5 inch gun, which is very nice. Otherwise, very similar to the Invincible. Same secondary gun layout. Um, a little bit faster, 27 and a half knots. And, uh, but otherwise very, very similar setup um, to the Invincibles. Oh yeah, I could do it from here. I keep forgetting that. Uh, and then we have our battleship. We have Dreadnought herself. We only have one of these, or at least my take on Dreadnought. Um, so this one only, uh, Dreadnought only has uh, four inch guns, not the four and a half. Um, 12 inch guns. Uh, she's a little bit faster than historical Dreadnought. Pushed her to 23 knots. But otherwise, that's kind of my take on HMS Dreadnought. Very similar, apart from the fact she's got 8 guns, not 10. Um, what does she have? 12? I can't remember. Anyway, she doesn't have the, the wing turrets, because wing turrets are a terrible idea. And this is a super firing gun, whereas Dreadnought did not have a super firing gun here. Um, and she she's a little bit more heavily armoured than, than Dreadnought was. And then we have the Bellerophons, which is our main line of battleship. I think we have seven of these, which is basically just a slightly bigger Dreadnought. This is a Dreadnought 2 hull. Um, same armour, uh, just upgraded four and a half inch guns. Um, and they actually end up being a knot slower, which is a bit weird, just because it's a bigger ship and the engines can't quite push them as fast. Um, and that's what we have. So we have, I think I counted the St. Vincent's as well. Hold on. Uh, Bellerophon. So yeah, we've got Bellerophon, Superb, Temeraire, that with the original um, Bellerophon's the St. Vincent's, which was St. Vincent, Collingwood and Vanguard, and I've included Neptune as well. Because I believe the next battleship would be Orion, the 13.5 inch guns, and that doesn't really fit on the battle, uh, on the Dreadnought 2. So hopefully we get some more, some more uh, hulls soon, and we can we can start on new battleship class, um, and yeah, we can uh, we can have a go at it. Yes, uh, yeah, they're very much <laughs> inspired by my own tastes. Um, uh, they're not. Hist purely historical, of course. They are merely inspired by, um, and yeah, things that I I, I really am not a huge fan of, like wing turrets and stuff like that. I've taken out. So down here we have uh, we've basically got two capital ship fleets. We've got one down here in Portsmouth, and we've got another one up here in in Recife. This one's mainly battle cruisers. This one's mainly battleships, which I think is fair enough. And really, we're waiting for some techs and waiting for 
some action. <laughs> French and what have you. Ah, in a foreign press conference, you have been severely criticised by the Austro-Hungarians Admiral of the Navy. Oh dear. What is your reaction? Um, <laughs> it's plus three naval prestige, minus three relations, plus five <laughs> naval prestige, plus one unrest, which I don't really want. Um, no comments, plus three unrest. So I'm going to go for this one. You find it unhonourable un to talk about someone when he is not present. And now we have light cruises up to big. Uh, ooh, high capacity, high explosive shells. Fun. Um, but nothing else super interesting, I don't think. Now we've got stereoscopic rangefinders on the way. Uh... Proof citadels. And we've got geared steam turbines coming too, which means our next set of ships will be. Uh, <laughs> yes, how dishonorable. Exactly. Um, the Germans are plummeting towards war with us. Um, I am expanding the shipyard. This is the new double shipyard rate. I mean, 50,000 tons is going to be plenty. <laughs> um. Absolutely plenty. Uh, a light squadron. Yeah, I, I, I think you might be right. I think we might send the old stuff. Here, yeah, look. Here, we've got a light, heavy cruiser and a light cruiser here. We've got Shannon and Sapphire. Uh, let's, let's move them down to Malta. And then we've got some other ancient junk lying around as well. Yeah, there's a light cruiser here, the Diamond. Send that all the way to Limassol. Um, a heavy cruiser here, we'll send that to Gibraltar, HMS Defence. Uh, there's a light cruiser here in Liverpool. Uh, send that to Malta as well, HMS Amethyst. What else have we got? Another heavy cruiser. Another light cruiser. Yeah, we'll send HMS Topaz to Malta. I'm not sure they're all fit, but they should do. Send a heavy cruiser down to Gibraltar. Minus or. That should be most of it. DD squad to the rock. Uh, ah, the Germans have sent us ultimatum demanding to withdraw our fleet that is operating near their borders. I'm not anywhere near your borders, Germany. Shut up. <laughs> yes. Fine. You want war, you can have war. There we go. <laughs> this is the guy who criticised me, who apparently cannot afford their navy. That's really bad to get that in peacetime. Jesus. And immediately war. Excellent. Good stuff. Um, good stuff indeed. How is our fleet looking? We have green crews, but you know what? It's fine for me. I'm going to put all of the uh, types. Yeah, types. All the battleships. All the battle cruisers on to sea control. Destroyers can stay on in being, and we can whack out <laughs> a, a huge amount on to research. Yeah, I'm keeping the DDs at home um, for now. I think they'll be useful. Although the the little war thing hasn't shown up in the the top corner, which is interesting. Uh, like if you're watching this, oh, it's turned up now. Okay, Austro-Hungarians, uh, yeah, <laughs> come at me. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Right. So uh, you can't see this on Twitch because it's behind my head. I'll read it out. So yeah, we have our eight battleships, eight battle cruisers, 
and all the rest. We've got 58 ships total. The Germans have 51 ships total, 6 battleships, 3 battle cruisers, 11 heavy cruisers, 10, 20 light cruisers, and 11 destroyers. And the Austro-Hungarians have 7 battleships and a battle cruiser, 16 heavy cruisers, 5 light cruisers, and 5 destroyers. So, yeah. Be nice to show away the, this, this little annoyance. Um, surprised this lot haven't gone out to investigate, but see if we get uh, something going on. What is the difference between setting sea control and setting them to sea? So sea control, the ships will sit in port and they'll intercept anything that comes within their sea control range. If you send them out to sea, then they'll do the exact same thing, but they'll do it from wherever they are at sea. If you see what I mean. And if they get into an engagement, they have to go back to port to repair. So if you have them sitting in port on sea control, then they'll go out, fight, and then come back. Uh, the French Empire offers an alliance, but needs considerable financial aid to support its navy. Now, I have 138 million currently. Is that something that would interest us? Shitting hell, that's too much. That's, that is just too much. <laughs> I know this screwed me over the last time I did it, but I, I'm so sorry, France, but you're asking too much. You can't ask for a quarter of a billion dollars. Uh, I don't have it. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, and they will they will go out and defend transports and stuff. Yeah, you're right. Um, yeah. I mean, they're at war with the Austro-Hungarians anyway. Whoa, that's a big fight. <laughs> I do have a tidy income, but I'd have to... Cut, like, screw it. They should have waited two turns. Um... Okay, nice now, and Prince Edward Fury. So two of the Germans' three battle cruisers have come out to play. They have 13.2-inch guns. They're 39.5 million each, which compares pretty favourably to ours, actually. They're big things. They're nearly 30,000 tons. Eight 13.2-inch guns. Their armour doesn't look great, though. Plus 100%. Mine are rocking plus 115 at the moment. And only goes up to 13.9 inch. Which is presumably their turret face. Hmm. 28 knots. So they're pretty fast. And then, yeah, a bunch of... A bunch of smaller ships. Well, let's get into it. Uh, the, the French will consider joining an alliance just flat out anyway uh that's a very long ship they spent a lot of money and a lot of weight having an enormous citadel on that it's got a q turret or oh, they wings do they actually hmm. right let's see who we have we have hms vanguard Leading up HMS Australia and HMS New Zealand. Very nice. Uh, we have a bunch of destroyers on a screen. I'm just going to set them to save uh, with the new torpedo mechanics. Uh, I'm much happier just operating like that. And uh, we'll get the battle cruisers just to kind of go ahead. It's nice to see. Uh, nice to see some some dreadnoughts. Uh, none, of this, none of these horrible tubs of a ship. And uh, these things move nicely. No, no more uh, endlessly seasick crews. <laughs> like these all have pretty good sea keeping uh, abilities. The big ships. Nice stable firing platforms. Don't make the crews quite as sick. And then even the, even the destroyers pretty... Uh, pretty well uh, uh, pretty good in terms of the sea keeping <laughs> send them to the bottle lads and I believe we have an enemy yes we do a German battle cruiser oh my it does have wing turrets well, you thought I was a long target look at that <laughs> oh, oh. 
Yeah, so these are 10 inch guns or 10.1 inch guns. That is a enormous ship. I want uh, Vanguard to lead things up and battle cruisers to move, come behind. Not expecting much from this long range, long ranged stuff. Yeah, <laughs> two gaming. Turrets are very close to the stud. But, I mean, the game should automatically extend the belt to cover all the turrets. Really, we're just trying to destroy each other's superstructures at the moment. Although the snapper, <laughs> Captain of the Snapper is absolute nonsense. He's like, no, screw this. I'm going to attack that <laughs> battle cruiser with my three inch guns. Which is a little bit ambitious. Okay, can we pull you a bit tighter in, please? It's uh, one hell of a screen, and Banshee's joining her as well. Um. <laughs> I think we can see their cruiser. Yeah. Not much to talk about with this type of light cruiser. There'll be stuff full of torpedoes or something annoying. Here we are. Nice. Nice now. Nice now. Well, look at that. Just a bevy of different guns. <laughs> look at that armor. Absolute crap. Increased ammo. That is that is something with Cordite I don't know. Maybe Cordite 2, which is pretty nice. I don't have access to that. I'm pretty sure I'm still Cordite 1. So that is quite nice for them. Still oh there's a couple of AP shells going out. This is a very explosive era. makes battles extra fun. <laughs> Not much going on at the moment. Done some damage to the battle cruisers, just not a lot. Pretty much the way of it. Right, let's knock out there, destroy it. Seeing as the capital ships aren't wanting to come and play. I know, logistics must be a nightmare. Yeah, I've actually uh, tried to keep things pretty similar. Um, so you'll see very similar calibers of gun, or very similar types of gun across the ships, because again, you know, they're based on historical ships, so it's not overly shocking. No, 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 shoot up the V3, 
They are saving their torpedo for the bound cruiser, which I do appreciate. Nice. That was a three inch hit, doing 287 damage. <laughs> Concentrate on the light cruiser next. Firing a torpedo. Hard to starboard. Oh, lovely. <laughs> HMS Char, having none of it. Uh, graduates got hit by a torpedo. Oh, nice. Who's that? Banshee. Good job, Banshee. Destroy captains are absolute lunatics. Ah, that was a big hit. We lost our main tower as well. I know. <laughs> Look at like the, these destroy captains are absolute lunatics. I love it. Naomi sinks. Hit! Hit! Wow! Good job by the shark. My uh, camp ship's doing loops. Right. Let's finish off the uh, light cruiser, please. Oh, no! Banshee! Got hit by a torpedo. Detach. And get out. Rejoins, I think. Gonna go down soon. Apparently needs encouraging. Oh. Snapper picks up a torpedo. <laughs> Gradual and sinks. Good. Right, Vanguard. Let's go to the rescue of the Banshee. Fire on that destroyer. Ooh, Banshee took a big hit there. Lovely. Right. Ooh, little torpedo. Torpedoes go all over the place now. Hey there, helicopters. No, Banshee. That was rude. Just smacked with a 13 inch gun. Uh, shark, don't do that. I know you're very eager, but you don't even have torpedoes left. Can you get out, please? Leave this to the big ships. <laughs> I split the division. 
going to go at them. See if we can't do some damage to these capital ships. Ooh, that was good. Ooh, more destroyers. Tiger 228UK. Oh, Australia took a big hit there. Get out. Why are you firing at the wrong ship? Jesus. Oh, John Cray, thank you for the 100 bits. Every little help certainly does. Sixteen percent chance to pen. Twenty percent. That doesn't seem right. How far away. We're a kilometer away. To be able to go through thirty-eight inches of armor effective. Okay, thirty-eight. Uh, thirty-eight, uh, and they have. What's their armor called? Hundred percent. You should be able to go through 19 inches of armor, so absolutely nothing on that ship should be able to stand up to that. Thank you. Way! <laughs> yeah, that's more like it. <laughs> flooding but I think she'll make it. Especially if we can sink Knags now. Good hit. Whoa, what the fuck is that? A torpedo? Sneaky little shit. That's not cool. What dishonorable rubbish is that? Oh, <laughs> no, no more torpedoes for you. <laughs> uh, it's going to hit me. The question is how bad. Uh, I don't believe so, Twitchy Nice. I think the exploding graphics are the same as they've always been. You just have to, you just have to catch them, <laughs> catch it when it's happening. <laughs> oh yeah, the reverse engine button. I know it works too well. Uh, it's bugged, so I, I know I don't use it normally anyway. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to abuse that. Ow, ow, ow. Please fire immediately. I'm waiting for a turret to swing around. Mm. 
what was that? What was that? Cross like rubbish. I think she's going to sink, though. It's taking on a lot of water. Ow. Good. Right, New Zealand can clear up the uh, destroyers as best you can. Uh, they do have torps, so I'll try not to be too stupid with it. Still. But uh, I kind of needed to uh, fend them off a bit. Because uh, Vanguard there is, and Australia as well are a little bit vulnerable. Hello there! Puffin 11? Is that right? Welcome, welcome. Thank you for coming along, saying hello. Let's see that little bastard. Oh, good shot. The ape. Australia absolutely getting a blinder of a hit on the V8. Ah, oh. oh no, yeah, that section is flooding. Don't think V8 will be able. To, well, she might struggle on and fire a torpedo. Although, right down goes V6. Just the one left then. Have to worry about that little spread of nonsense. Unless, of course, we can sink the V9 before she's able to do any damage. Or oh, the, the torpedoes are able to do any damage. Vanguard really doesn't have much ability to do anything. But one of the torpedoes has flaked out, leaving a gap. No, 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 feel free to ask. Uh, <laughs> as others have said, I'm doing, uh, well, not quite historical, um, because that would be the end of battle. <laughs> Torpedoes don't count. Did hit. Okay, uh, so we just lose the Banshee. She fought bravely, though. Uh, the Germans lose 
a lot. Two battle cruisers. They only have one of those left. Two light cruisers. Four destroyers. Not bad at all. Uh, MVP goes to Vanguard. Look at that. 22,000 damage. <laughs> really impressive. Although, New Zealand wasn't far behind with 20,000 damage. Hmm. Yeah, ships did well. Um, they're not quite as tough as I would like, uh, but they did alright. They did absolutely fine there. Uh, 17,000 victory points for us, hopefully. And we immediately have some more fights. But I'm going to say that for next time, and uh, I will see you in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching, and bye-bye uh, for now.